All right, now here's something we haven't talked about before, but you might have seen in the homework, this EN. What do you think is the coordination number here? Right? Yeah, that's right. So what would be the geometry? That's right. So EN is short for ethylene diamine. EN is short for ethylene diamine, but they usually use EN. This is what ethylene diamine looks like. Notice that there's two nitrogens in this molecule, so there's the potential to form two coordinate covalent bonds to the transition metal. This nitrogen could form a coordinate covalent bond, and this nitrogen could also form a coordinate covalent bond to some central atom, say the cobalt in the center. Well, this counts as one number, and this counts as a separate coordination number for the coordination number, so that I showed a coordination number here of two overall. So what is going to be our geometry here? Well, since there's six, I guess that would be octahedral again. We'll go through this together. So here would be one way of drawing this compound. I think that you're generally going to want to draw these as cis, not trans, in the sense that the nitrogens that are connected should be 90 degrees from each other, not 180. I don't think this molecule would be necessarily long enough to connect things that are 180. All the examples in the book were only 90 degrees away from each other. All right, so we'll, um, I'm just drawing these as not, so notice that, so uh, is it clear what these little bonds here mean? So one way I could have drawn this is I could have drawn, uh, I could have put in some more detail here, and I could have ca called this NH2, CH2, CH2. So here's what's really going on between these two nitrogens. They're connected con by this carbon chain. Uh, and these nitrogens are connected by a similar carbon chain. But for purposes of working out the, G, uh, the, the, stereo, um, the stereochemistry, the isomerism, drawing these carbons doesn't really help us any much. It's a necessary complication. So your book uses a good convention of just drawing the, 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 the back of the molecule here just like a link like this. So I think I'll go with that. And we don't even have to put in the hydrogens. The hydrogens are not playing any important role in the geometry either. All right, so we can say these are linked to each other um, as well. I'm not saying this is the only way you could draw this. This is just one good picture to start with. And again, notice that the nitrogens that are linked, I'm drawing all the nitrogens that are linked at 90 degree angles. These two are at a 90 degree angle, these two are at 90, and these two are 90. I don't think that, at least in this case, the molecule is big enough to do a 180 degree angle between two nitrogens that are linked. There are no examples of that in the book, anyway. All right, so we won't have to worry about cis and trans here. What we have to worry about is whether there are any optical isomers. Well, let's try drawing the mirror image of this. I, um, for us to be on the same page, it might be better to put your mirror over here. I know, I ran out of space. Okay, 
Um, by the way, before I forget, I think you guys already mentioned this term. I think maybe you already know these are called bidentate. Something that can connect, um, get coordinate in two different places is called a bidentate ligand uh, for like two teeth or two connections. All right, now um, let's see. In this case, the nitrogen is bound, this nitrogen is bound to a nitrogen that's pointing towards the back and that is close to the mirror. So in the mirror image, it should still be bound to a nitrogen that is pointing to the back and is close to the mirror. These two nitrogens, I think, are pretty easy to transpose over here. This nitrogen in this picture was bound to a nitrogen that's pointing away um, towards you and close to the mirror. So this nitrogen should still be towards you and close to the mirror. Notice that the mirror does not flip the wedges and the dashes. Something that's pointing towards you is still pointing towards you in this picture. Um, what it's changing is the left and the right, basically. Uh, of course, there are different places you could put a mirror. You could put a mirror here as well to get a different mirror image. You can even imagine that the mirror is in the plane of the board. And you could, uh, that's the way the book does it. But I find that kind of confusing. I find it easier to put the mirror right in, um, in this position. So I try to always do that. Now, these two pictures don't look identical yet. For example, this has a connection on the right, and this has a connection on the left. But what we have to ask is there's some way we can flip or rotate this picture so it'll go back to looking like this picture. Uh, well, things, now is where things would get a little bit hard, but what do you think? an identical picture. Mm -hmm. So what, what's the proposed flip or rotation? Are you thinking about taking it like this? Yeah. Okay. I'd like you to actually draw what this look, would look like if you go from here to here. Just draw a separate picture. So basically if we were to do that. Okay. It's like flipping my hand like this. Let's draw what this molecule would look like after we flip it. So, is it the same now as this picture or different? different? That's right. Good. Okay, but this is where things get hard. Let's go through it together. Um, so now what we're trying to do is we're trying to, you can think of this as rotating 180 degrees around a vertical axis. We can think of ourselves as rotating around this vertical line, 180 degrees. Does that make sense? So um, I'll write that down here. OK. Um, now I know that this nitrogen in this picture was bound to this nitrogen over here. So I need to um, keep these two things connected. Well, what has happened to this nitrogen? Let's call this nitrogen star for the time being. Where is nitrogen star after I rotate this molecule 180 degrees, after I flip it like this? I'm sorry, are we looking at the mirror image? Oh, OK. I'm, um, yeah, actually, you can do either one. Okay. You can try to rotate this so it looks like this, or you can try to rotate this so it looks like this. Um, for me, it makes more sense to try to rotate the mirror image and see if you can make it look like the original picture. But, but either way, okay. it could work. Okay. What, but what I'm doing here is I'm taking the mirror image and I'm rotating it. Okay. Okay. Now, if we take this mirror image and we rotate it, where is this n star going to end up? It's going to be on that side in the front. So will, will it be on the left or the right? right? It'll be on the right. And will it be on a wedge or a dash? A wedge. That's the key that most people wouldn't notice. Yeah. Again, if we really flipped 180 degrees, anything who was behind, if you flipped like this, wouldn't it? Notice that right now my palm is pointing away from you. But if I flip 180 degrees, my palm is facing towards you. 
So anything who's on a dash has to turn into a wedge in this picture. That's the key thing that most people miss. And that's why I say you should actually physically write down the new picture, because that's the thing that's hard to notice. Now I can draw in that these are still bonded. So you can see these have to be done one little piece at a time. You can't just jump right into the picture, because they're not obvious. 